Yeah, so let's take a look. The issue of House control, who would have thought we'd be talking about this as an open question now the night after the election? But here's where things stand. Big picture, this is the NBC News model for the House. 218 seats needed for uh, control. We have the Republicans right now in our model landing at 222 seats, which would be a narrow majority. But the key here, of course, is that is plus or minus seven seats. So what that means is the high range for Democrats remains 220. So there are still scenarios. There's far more scenarios where Republicans land in control of the House, but there remain scenarios where Democrats actually end up with control. Let me take you through what that would look like, what the battle for the House is right now, and what remains to be called here. So here's one way of, uh, of breaking it down. Let me just call this open. So we're going to first show you. These are the gains that Republicans have posted. Remember, they needed a net gain of five seats. These are the Democratic seats that they've succeeded in flipping. And one thing that stands out on this list, four of them are from New York State, including that NY17 that you see right there. That's Sean Patrick Maloney, the chair of the DCCC. The DCCC, by all measures, had a historically incredible night. And yet, ironically, its chairman loses in his own district and four Democrats, four Democratic seats have flipped to the Republicans in New York State. That's a consequence, it may be, of the governor's race. While Kathy Hochul won, her Republican opponent, Lee Zeldin, ran up huge margins outside of New York City where these districts are. So that is the biggest single blow Democrats have taken so far has been in New York State. But the bottom line, there are 16 Democratic-held districts that Republicans have now flipped. That's smaller than people were expecting going in. Where we would be right now, a number that that is bigger than many were expecting is that Democrats have so far flipped six Republican seats. So you start with those 16 Republican gains, and now what you're seeing on your screen are Republican districts that Democrats succeeded in flipping. And so that 16-seat gain for Republicans is shaved down to 10 with what the Democrats have achieved. And then that leaves what's left. First, let's look at it this way. What are Republicans still targeting and hoping, hoping to win that are de it's Democratic held right now? Where else could Republicans get gains? And again, I think a couple things jump out on this list. First of all, look how many are in California. There are five Democratic held seats in California that Republicans are hoping to flip. Josh Harder, for instance. And this is the thing with California. It's limited results that we're going to see right now, and it's going to be, in many cases, weeks till we get clarity in some of these races. But this is what Republicans, any of these would be a Republican gain. Democrats, what Democrats need to do is basically defend every seat I'm showing you. Josh Harder in the ninth, the 13th district, which is newly created. They need Julia Brownlee to win in the 26th. They need Katie Porter to hang on in the 47th district. They need Mike Levin to hang on in the 49th. The Democrats have to win all those California seats. Another major source, we were just talking about it in Nevada. The Democrats, take a look here. Three competitive districts in Nevada. Nevada. Dina Titus had a safe Democratic district. Democrats gambled by changing the lines to make hers more competitive, thinking she could still win. She leads, and they did that thinking it would shore up the third district for Susie Lee, who leads by a slim margin, but does lead, and thinking it would shore up Stephen Horsford in the 4th District, who does lead as well by a slightly larger margin. So Democrats need to, in an ideal world for them, they would defend every seat here. I'm showing you they have an opportunity in those California seats. They have an opportunity to sweep in Nevada. Maine, too, is on this list. Jared Golden leads there as well. Keep in mind, there's a ranked choice runoff there, potentially, if nobody gets to 50 percent. But Democrats, I think, are pretty pleased with where Jared Golden is sitting uh, in, uh, uh, in Maine right now, Washington's 8th district. They need Kim Schreier to hang on there. There's the Alaska uh, seat. We know this story. It's going to rank choice voting. Democrats would like to see a repeat of what happened there this summer when Mary Peltola won that. I think if there's one here that's in particular danger for Democrats, it's the 6th district of Arizona. Also, potentially here, the 5th district uh, in Oregon. So, Democrats, if they can hold their losses here to one or two seats, we showed you Republicans at 16. Maybe they stitch one or two more together from this list. And then this becomes kind of the ball game for Democrats. Where else can Democrats gain seats? And again, what you notice, one, 
two, three, four. There are five California districts here with Republican, Republican-held California districts. Democrats are probably going to need to defend all of the, if they want to get the House, are going to have to defend all of their California seats and start flipping. They're going to need to flip the third district. They're going to need to flip the 22nd district. They're going to need to flip the 27th district. They're going to need to flip the 41st. They're going to need to flip the 45th. Now, again, as I say, these vote counts take long time. We can see late shifts in these things. It's really hard to ca characterize a lot of these California races right now. But Democrats would need to get those. What else would they need? The second district of New Mexico. Look at this. It's almost all in. They do have a lead there. It would help them dearly if they could get the third district in Washington. This is Joe Kent, who ousted Republican Jamie Herrera Butler, a pro impeachment Republican in the primary. Washington does one report a day. This lead already came down today, so that one may be a little shaky for Democrats. And here's one that would help Democrats extremely. Colorado's third district, Lauren Boebert, and look at that. It's hard to get more even than that. Wow. A 73 vote difference right now between Adam Frisch, the Democrat, and Lauren Boebert, the Republican. I know that almost uh, sort of symbolically, there are a lot of Democrats who would like to defeat Lauren Boebert, but in terms of the math of the House, this becomes critical, given everything I've showed you before. Democrats need to light up. They're, they're probably not going to be able to light up everything here, but they need to light up just about everything on this list I'm showing you right here. They need to defend just about everything on this list that I'm showing you here, including all of those California seats. And that is the kind of combination where Democrats could land at 218, 219 seats, something like that. It would be the ultimate inside straight in politics, but that's what it would take. <laughs> and then, of course, there's a question of whether Kevin McCarthy is actually rooting for Lauren Boebert to win. Like, if he's got a one-seat majority <laughs> oh, and one God. of the seats is Lauren Boebert, oh which would he rather have? <laughs>